After over five years, Shovel Knight is coming to a close with King of Cards, the final DLC for the original game. King of Cards stars Shovel Knight's fanciest boss, King Knight. Is Shovel Knight's weakest boss's solo campaign good enough to give arguably the greatest indie game of all time the royal send-off it deserves, or does it fall flat? King of Cards is about 80% platforming and 20% card game, hence the cards in the title. King Knight dreams of becoming a real king and finds his opportunity in the King of Cards tournament. To win the title, he needs to defeat the three judges in Games of Joustice. The rules are simple, capture more gems on the board than your opponent by the end of the game. To capture a gem, you have to push one of your cards onto it, and each card has its own unique properties. I'm not a big card game fan, but I enjoyed playing Joustice throughout the campaign. Each of the three areas has a Joustice Hall in it in which you must win four matches before you can challenge that area's king. When you reach those kings, however, King Knight decides instead to beat them senseless and then boast about his intellectual victory over them. The story, as with other Shovel Knight campaigns before it, is told mostly through cutscenes and is usually pretty funny. I really enjoyed the fact that King Knight is depicted as a petulant brat who feels he deserves to rule the world. At the beginning of the game, King Knight still lives with his mom, who takes the role of the gastronomer making pies for King Knight which increase his total overall health for a price. His mom also sells a second type of pie which will increase your vigor allowing you to use relics more often, but you'll need to have medals for those. Metals are found scattered throughout the traditional platforming levels, which make up the majority of the game, and they're arguably the best the game has to offer across its multiple single-player campaigns. Like Spectre Knight before him, King Knight relies on his main attack as his means of traversal. When he hits something with his shoulder bash, King Knight goes into a spinning jump that behaves similarly to Shovel Knight's downward thrust. If you hit something with your spinning jump, you can then use your shoulder bash again in mid-air. In some areas, it's possible to make your way through without King Knight ever touching the ground, and in later levels, you'll be expected to do exactly that. It can sound a bit daunting on paper to attack, bounce, and move past enemies by chaining attacks, but Yacht Club's top-notch level design shines through brilliantly in King of Cards. Before any new element is thrown at you, there's a brief section of the level that is designed to teach you how it works. For instance, later in the game, there are walls that your shoulder bash won't work on. Before you have to deal with them on top of everything else, you'll find yourself in a room with those walls placed where you would normally be expected to make a jump, leaving you to figure out how to work around these situations. I absolutely love the way King of Cards puts in situations that require you to learn new things without sending you through endless tutorials. As I fought my way through Pridemore to Trupal Pond and beyond to the final battle, I couldn't suppress my enjoyment. I had forgotten just how charming Shovel Knight's world can be. Watching King Knight gather allies as he inched ever closer to becoming a real king, I couldn't help but hope that he'd have a change of heart and become good. But King of Cards is more of a comedy than the rest of the campaigns. Where humor was a small part of the story in previous campaigns, King of Cards is centered around it to great effect. As I read through the cutscenes, I'd often find them punctuated by a joke, and the way King Knight is treated by his own mother is hilarious to me. Gameplay-wise, King of Cards feels fresh, but familiar. But in a narrative sense, it feels completely brand new. I've never laughed so much at any of the previous campaigns. If you're looking for something completely new from King of Cards, there likely isn't much here for you, but that's also by design. There aren't any new enemies to be had because this serves as a prequel to Shovel of Hope. All the locations and enemies are things you've encountered before, you're just interacting with them in slightly different ways. The good news, however, is that if you already own Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, then you'll get King of Cards and Showdown as free DLC. Beating the game took me around 5 hours. If you know what you're doing, that time can probably be cut in half. Despite its brevity, I had more fun playing King of Cards than I did with games two or three times its size. After you finish the main story, you can start New Game Plus, which makes some minor tweaks to the difficulty and makes you spend your money to use your relics, or if you'd like to take on a challenge, well, there's a mode for that. <laughs> there are 27 challenges to take on, and only a handful offer rewards. To me though, the rewards seem pointless, as you can only play challenge mode once you've completed the game, and while New Game Plus may interest some, I don't see myself going back for seconds anytime soon. That's about all there is to know about King of Cards, so how does it fare as a send-off for the most popular indie game ever? Very well. Yacht Club did a great job closing out the game. I like King of Cards a lot, and I can't recommend picking it up enough. Not only because it's an excellent game in its own right, but also because it's an amazing addition to Treasure Trove, which already contains three must-play campaigns. I'm excited to see what the studio moves on to next, now that they can finally put Shovel Knight behind them, but I'd be lying if I said I weren't excited to see where he'll end up next. That wraps up our review of Shovel Knight, King of Cards. As always, thank you so much for watching, and make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for much more on Shovel Knight, including a review of Shovel Knight Showdown, and all other things gaming as well. Make sure to ring the notification bell to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. 
and I'll see you next time.